Hello. So today we're going to discuss um, some features of reaction coordinate diagrams and transformations of molecules. In particular, we'll be focusing on intermediate versus transition states. It's part of our series on challenging concepts in organic chemistry. And really what we want to focus on is an understanding of this subtle difference and not obvious feature of a difference between a transition state and a um, intermediate that might occur in a transformation of one organic molecule to another. So all molecular transformations go through transition states. Not all molecular transformations goes through intermediates. We're going to discuss perhaps why this is a challenging difference. That perhaps is coming from the fact that the terms seem interchangeable in terms of the terminology until we look at it in a bit more detail. Typically in organic chemistry, we'll encounter these two features, intermediates and transition states, in the context of uh, reaction at coordinate diagram. An example is shown here. We have a energy versus reaction progress. So we're imagining the starting material being on the left and the product being on the right. And we go through these energy hills and little valleys in between the transformation of starting material to product. But what's the difference between the intermediate and the transition state? So we could always consider the transition state being the highest point along that surface of reaction progress. Okay? So any of the high points, any of the mountains, we would have a transition state. And these are essentially the point between a st one molecule and another, and it's right at the edge between where the two compounds are transforming between each other. All reactions progress through a transition state, some sort of intermediate state between starting material and product. But not all reactions progress through an intermediate, and the difference between an intermediate and a transition state. So we can see here, the intermediate is some sort of compound in between two transition states. So it's a local energy minima, so it's a relatively low energy point between two higher energy points, but it may not be the lowest energy point overall. So with that in mind, we can always think of a transition state a little bit like a high energy point, sort of a top of a mountain. So an analogy we make in class is it's like in Greek mythology, the parable of Scythesis, who was this bad guy whose punishment was to push a rock up a hill forever. It's like a transition state. As soon as a rock gets to the top of the hill, it rolls back down to either starting material, product, or intermediate. An intermediate is a relatively stable compound, relatively stable molecule. In principle, you can isolate an intermediate. It is impossible to isolate a transition state because as soon as a molecule or set of molecules reaches a transition state, it will almost instantly transform, go over the hill into either starting material or the product. Okay. So some other perhaps more exotic cases. A simple case is shown um, bottom left here. It shows a transformation that proceeds, as always, through a transition state, but it only involves starting material and product. It's intermediate free, but it always has a transition state. And another extreme example, maybe the bottom right structure drawn here, there is an intermediate. It's very, very low in the actual difference between the transition state peaks and intermediate, but there still is a local energy minimum, which is intermediate. Okay, so a couple of other concepts related to that, which perhaps are um, difficult, not obvious, and certainly you know challenging to think about, are the fact that in all these processes, we're breaking bonds and forming bonds. Very important to note that all bond breaking events cost energy. It's always costly of energy to break a bond, and the reason for that would be that if you did not have a bond, it would cost you no energy. If a bond didn't cost you energy to break it, then it would not form in the first place. And then another 
key point there is um, perhaps related to all this is the difference between the free energy of a reaction and the enthalpy. Enthalpy is very easy to measure, measure the heat difference, but it's important to know that many reactions in fact proceed with a negative um, gives free energy or thermodynamically favorability without actually having a uh, exothermic reaction. Okay, thank you.